My favorite toy. Hmm. I, I definitely love Barbies. Power Rangers. Um, I remember having like a bear or something growing up that I would truck around with me everywhere. Just because they could like transform into something bigger and like after you bought all of them. <laughs> My name is Jeff Gibson, I'm a sociology major in um, the qualitative methodology class. Um, one of the things I um, did was went to the Myers to look at um, toys and how they affect gender roles. So a couple things I noticed when I first going to Myers is knowing the different toy aisles. It's very clear, you know, what is for girls and what is for boys, even down to the colors. It's just feminine and masculine colors. The girls all have a lot of pinks and purples and like you know, the blues and, and the yellows for boys. It's more accepting for girls to like all sorts of colors when colors for men are looked at as uh, not as accepted by them. Um, comparing toys from my childhood to what toys are now, a lot of them are, like, I think they're too grown up looking. And I think like the durability of these toys now, I think that's part of our society before toys were really durable and they last long, but now they break so much. So it forces the parents to go out and buy more of these toys. When we visited the Amish people, they said that there's very few toys that they really like their children to play with. And when they mention things, they mention that they like Legos, they like things like wooden blocks, puzzles. These things here would be really good. The lace and trace, it's kind of old school gender neutral boys and girls can play with them. So we try to compare that to how that fits with um, the English, as the Amish would refer, refer to us, how their toys would um, be used in our society. Some of the gender neutral toys it wouldn't be like stereotypical, like the board games and um, maybe some like the animals. And xylophone or like something like that that could be used for both boys and girls. Some of the packaging I consider, they don't, that wasn't like too pink or it wasn't too blue and red. I think a lot of the gender neutrality has to do with the colors of things, how it like mix, mixes masculine and feminine colors. Generally it was the male character in front of the female. And so in that you have the girl who's showing what the boy made. I think that we do push on little girls that, yeah, they have to be a certain way. And we do this by giving them Barbies and giving them dolls and, and kitchen sets. And, and the boys' toys were usually more of type cars, weapons. Smashbox cars, the little army men. This is definitely the boy aisle. An action figure is a manlier toy that uh, accentuates the type of features a man should have, like a barrel chest, six pack abs, and like thin waist. WWE wrestler guys being like these extreme steroid pumping guys. I guess that would be a good way to explain them. Usually has like an action it does, like a karate chop or something like that. Like they're men and they, they do manly things. Like it just shows masculinity, like no one wants to be considered a sissy or anything. It's all about appearance now. It also does the same with women, how they're supposed to be a doll, thin, a big breasts, that type of thing. But you can think of one of the little girls as Barbie. Barbie can be anything she wants to be. A business worker, a maid, a cook. When I was bored and my friends weren't around, I would sit down with the Barbie house and the, and the Barbie clothes and play with my little sister. It was fun dressing them up. I remember having a pool that Barbie could swim in, and they had a little shower, and I had a Barbie car. Um, I remember growing up, just seeing it all the time. Ken came out, and Barbie, they're supposed to be like a happy family. Because girls and boys see probably see those people as more of uh, role models. Back in the day, Barbie was designed as a sex toy, and she was sold in Germany, and it was an American woman who thought, that would be lovely to have young children play with, and they could imagine that they were grown up and stylish. And just from watching my cousins and um, my sister and stuff too, when they played with their dolls, they were role playing with these toys, of how grown ups were supposed to act. I mean, if you see a guy playing with a Barbie, especially, I mean, I can't say for everybody, but majority, especially if it's like a father sees their son playing with a doll, like, oh, my kid's not gonna be gay, and he'll take the doll. I mean, playing with Barbies doesn't make you gay. I don't know if I really played with 
any uh, any girls' toys. I probably did, but I don't remember. Because there's that weird factor you feel, the social taboo of being in this kind of aisle. And if someone came up to me and asked me, I'm like, oh, I'm buying something for my sister, and he'd lie. And I just, it's weird just to, to get rid of that, that feeling, that stigma. Yeah, I always felt that way going on the girl aisle is like taboo. And that one in the bra aisle, like, then you just feel like really creepy. <laughs> like a whole other going on. <laughs> like, where you're, you're not you supposed belong, to be yeah. there. I remember uh, one time uh, my friend's sisters were like chasing us around his house with Barbies and we were running away from them like it would be the worst thing on earth to play with them or something just because it, it was seen as like something a boy shouldn't do. <laughs> Whereas if a little girl is playing with a truck, nobody sees anything wrong with it and I think in, in some aspects people even think that it's cool. We heard the boys talking about how they felt embarrassed to be in the girls' aisle, but I know I never felt that way. I never felt like, I would be bullied if I played with boys' toys. Never. With girls playing with uh, boys' toys, then they would be like moving up in status. When if boys were uh, playing with girls' toys, they'd be going down. I just seen a thing on Facebook where it was like some girls play with dolls and some girls go hunting and it had this little girl and she was holding a, a buck by the by the horns, you know, he was dead and she was holding him and, and she was standing there with him and she had on like her little pink camo and that was like cool. We teach that, we instill that in children at a very young age just based off of what we give them to play with. Uh, hula hoops are definitely looked at as feminine because it really shows off like the hips and guys aren't really supposed to um, show off their hips really. <laughs> I think it just depends on the toy and like how you grew up with it. It was just me and my sister so everything was pink and girly and Barbies and baby dolls and we didn't play with you know trucks. Or... Um, I used to have little tractors. I lived out on a farm so I had the pretty good size toy tractors and uh, me and my brother he would go out and we would disc up the fields and pretend to plow. I guess when you're little, like when I was younger, if somebody would have bought me trucks, I probably would have played with them. I mean, because kids will pretty much play with anything, but... My brother, he actually does farming now. So I think what you can look at is like how toys can shape our futures. 